All right, everyone, now we have the big political news of the day, which is Trump is thinking about, apparently, this, this is the report anyway, the report is he's got a draft memo, it's not, you know, fully done yet, that he can sign to uh, order an investigation into some of the bigger companies in Silicon Valley under antitrust auspices. The idea is it's an extension of claims that have been made with regards to Silicon Valley's political bias. Basically, selective enforcement, uh, you know, harassment of and suppression of people. Now, Trump says of conservatives. It's way beyond that. It's not conservatives that are being suppressed. Garden variety rhino conservatives, someone like so like, like uh, uh, Mitch McConnell, they're, no, they're not really being suppressed. The populistic side of conservatism, uh, maybe. Libertarians, yes. Um, you know, people who are more on the identitarian side, yes, paleocons, tradcons, uh, people like that. They're being suppressed to one degree or another. What Trump needs to understand, I, I wish that Trump would do what the Senate apparently is unwilling to do and get, you know, a half a dozen political YouTubers in for an hour-long session because we could tell him what's actually going on. What is happening is exactly what I said would happen two years ago. The corporate media and some of these buddies of theirs, the NGOs, the craftivists, are seeking to exploit an existing political social panic in order to destroy their fiscal competitors. It's not about any inherent entrenched Silicon Valley political bias. That's just the method by which this moral panic is operating. If you apply antitrust legislation, that will definitely help the situation. My hope, and, and my hope is this, my earnest hope, is that these companies get together and meet. And they say, do we want to risk it or do we just want to say, you know, at some point we've got to stop it anyway. We're going to pull back on the censorship. Our platforms were stable and growing before. We'll tell the NGOs off. We're, we'll, you know, pay off the corporate. You know, <laughs> Google and Facebook and Twitter have a lot of money. Just fucking pay these people to write hit pieces about the NGOs that are a monkey on your back at this point. Get them off of you and then return to normal. That's my hope. It, it, it's such a remote chance that they'll see reason and that the mere threat of being legislated against or regulated will dissuade them from further depersoning. It's a remote chance, but it could work. But my hope is that Trump goes further. My hope is that what Donald Trump will essentially do is propose what would be a final working solution in order to prevent this from ever happening again, which is an Internet Bill of Rights. A fairly strict, ironclad, stripped down, very simplistic five or six point internet bill of rights. Thou shalt not censor, you know, political opinions just because you're offended. Thou, sh thou shalt take advantage of the fucking option to block people or ignore them or debate them like a normal, sane, rational, uh, uh, non-fragile, snowflake-like human being. That's essentially what we need. Barring that, yeah, antitrust legislation can help because you could crack these companies apart. My worry is though, what would happen is that you would simply end up with more Silicon Valley companies uh, that would be doing the same thing. Like this isn't gonna dissuade them from censorship. They'll keep, you know, they'll keep being pressured by NGOs to do that. It's not like they're suddenly gonna be run by libertarians. It just means there'll be more fiscal competition. This might be good, like a site like Amazon. It might make, mean that they have to offer you more, uh, you know, of a royalty for your books or something. Okay, you know, that might be okay for income-wise things. Um, it might take care of something like Adpocalypse, but it's not going to stop overt censorship. It doesn't now. You look what's been done with these companies. It, it, you've got a handful of companies control an inordinate proportion of all human communication. They are a trust. That is definitely true. It's just that nobody has the balls to apply antitrust legislation specifically because they make huge political donations. That is, we've that is, government intervention created a monster. And it was government intervention. The differential tax codes that the government has implemented that allow a big corporation to take advantage of a tax haven means it will always outcompete some upstart competitor. You have too much old wood, you have some corporate monopolies that cannot be competed with. What's happened over and over when people do try to compete? What happened to Hatreon and Maker Support? They were completely crushed. Payment processors fucked them over and they couldn't function. So it would be impossible for a payment processor to arise. It will always be destroyed. Because as, as long as one person makes a report or about hate, my hate speech or my, my violence uh, encouragement or incitement or something, or my, my, I got defrauded or you know I reversed a bunch of payments to you know knock them off 
uh, the, the payment rankings or something. As long as something like that can happen, it will happen, and it'll be orchestrated by their competitors. And look in Silicon Valley. Here's another secret. Sometimes they can't directly tackle a group. Like Facebook couldn't attack Minds.com, but PayPal could. And PayPal can't uh, attack an actual other you know, competing payment processor, but the other tech firms can. So again, it's one hand washes the other. When you have a couple dozen companies controlling 99% of the visible internet, that's what happens. But breaking them apart isn't going to stop this from being the way business is done. It's just going to mean there are going to be more companies that will censor people. It's not going to solve the issue. What you need is legislation to declare this a public square. The internet is the modern public square. These are not public utilities, but should be treated as such for certain purposes. And because of the intrinsic nature of human communication online being tied in the sense of even national security, with literally the security of our economy and our culture and the ability of people to innovate, because of that it is too important to allow private corporations to stifle free speech. It's as simple as that, and I love it when people talk about a free market. There's no free market online. There's no free market. If there were a free market, then these alt tech sites wouldn't be deplatformed by their domain name registrar and stuff who have nothing to do with, with decisions made by Facebook or Twitter. It's like, some, it's like the New York Times complains about Gab. All of a sudden, their domain registrar drops them. Well, the New York Times is literally tied at the hip to the same NGOs that work with the big tech firms. Again, we're going to Becca Lewis this shit up and say, well, there's two steps uh, removed from the New York Times. Well, it's collusion. I guess that it's part of a conspiracy. And they're seeking to appear benevolent when actually they're multi-billion dollar corporations seeking to censor their competitors. Funny how that works. I support Trump's concept here. I support doing something. But I don't think antitrust legislation alone is enough. It's helpful, especially on the fiscal side, but it's not going to stop the underlying issue. If anything, this will just inject more partisan politics into an already sore issue. We need an Internet Bill of Rights. That's all we need. U.S. firms make up the backbone of most of the Internet. Nobody gives a fuck if Mail.ru or, or you know, Chinese firms enabled, oddly enough at this point, <laughs> by Google in the most literal sense. Nobody cares if they do the censorship thing. Those are their countries. For U.S. firms, U.S. laws only should apply, and that's all that should be policed. There are two things that should get you kicked off of these sites, and only two things. Number one, you're breaking U.S. law. That's credible threat, incitement to violence, literally incitement to violence, like saying, hey, let's go burn down so-and-so's house or something. Uh, stalking, harassment, that sort of thing. I don't mean just, hey, you made a nasty comment. I mean, you, you jump bans five or six times on that person's page to continue harassing and wheedling them. That rises to the level of criminal harassment and stalking. Or defamation, you're defaming someone, which, which, by the way, all the corporate media is guilty of at this point towards YouTubers among other groups of people. Or you are preventing others from exercising their right to express and speak freely. Now, this is difficult to do on most of these platforms. Like on Facebook, you can't stop somebody from making Facebook posts. Whether you're jumbling up their, their, their comment section or not, if they block you, you know, basically it's fine. But be, being offended by someone else doesn't mean that they're doing anything wrong. It means that you need to grow up. It means you need to grow a fucking spine. It means you need to learn to deal with the fact that the world isn't 100% on your side all the time. People will disagree with you, and sometimes they get angry because you're such a self-righteous twat. That's really what it's about. But, you know, it's difficult for a lot of people to do this. They've been taught that they're very special. Most of these people that are part of these craptivist groups, they, they come from gated communities. They got, like, the trust funds. It's like you look at Antifa. What are these people in Antifa? Well, when they're unmasked, when they're hauled in. What is almost invariably true? They're white and they're from the middle class. They're not from, they're not from poverty. Uh, they're not minorities or anything like that. They're not part of any of the oppressed groups that they themselves identify. They're like a bunch of middle class bourgeois kids that type things up on their iPads and drink Starbucks all day. That's what Antifa is comprised of. Yeah, there's a reason for that. They're very, very special, very fragile people. That's about all. Peace out.